Hey Bon Beanie everybody, Matt here from the Cruise Geeks introducing you to this new series, The Cruise Geeks Fantastic Guide to Snorkeling. This is episode one. Today we're going to cover what snorkeling is, why people snorkel, where they snorkel, a couple other little things, and then we'll introduce you and give you a preview of the rest of this series. Now let's start with what snorkeling is, because it can be confusing. People talk about snorkeling, they talk about free diving, they talk about scuba diving, snuba. Let, let's cover the ones that we're not going to cover in this course. First of all, snuba is actually swimming underwater and you're breathing through something called a regulator, which is the same thing that scuba divers use. The difference is, instead of a tank on your back, you're connected to a hose that's hooked up top to a, to a compressor that is pushing that air down so that you can take breaths. That's snuva, and you can do that without any certification. If you're going on a cruise, a lot of places will offer that as an excursion or an opportunity to do that at various facilities. Now scuba diving is a little bit different. Scuba diving requires some training. There are instances when you're maybe you're on a cruise or someplace where you could do like a beginner or try scuba excursion. That is a possibility, but most diving does require that you go through a full course and get your C card, your diving certification card. Now we're not going to cover scuba and snuba in this series, but we are going to go a little bit into free diving. Free diving is pretty close to snorkeling, and sometimes what I like to do is probably sort of a, a mesh up between free diving and snorkeling. The difference being, free diving just means swimming underwater, but usually when you're free diving, you're focused on spending a lot of time underwater, and in some cases, you could be swimming pretty deep. Free divers can pretty regularly go to 30, 40, 50 feet underwater, and in some cases, quite a bit deeper than that. But the focus of this series is snorkeling, and snorkeling is basically using a mask of some sort, a snorkel of some sort that is required for snorkeling, and fins are usually part of that picture, staying at the surface for the majority of the time, but occasionally, if you choose, when you see something interesting, you can swim down and take a closer look. So why do we snorkel? Well, you do get some exercise from it. It is relaxing, but I think most people snorkel because it's fun and they want to see stuff that's underwater. Well, what can you see underwater? Obviously fish and other marine life or freshwater creatures if you're in freshwater, but also I've snorkeled on wrecks and ruins and all kinds of interesting things. You might even go places and snorkel for fossils. There's a beach not far from me where you can snorkel for shark's teeth, like fossilized shark's teeth. So there's a lot of great reasons to get out in the water and look below the surface. Now where do people snorkel? Well, just about anywhere where there's water that you can see through, people can snorkel in it. Whether that's fresh water or salt water, rivers, lakes, I've even snorkeled in ponds, but of course the ocean is what most people think of when snorkeling. Here in Florida, there are a lot of freshwater springs that are great for snorkeling as well, but my favorite places to snorkel are on coral reefs. And uh, when I cruise through the Caribbean or any place else I go, if there's a coral reef, you can bet I'm going to want to get in the water and snorkel. One last thing I want to talk about in this first video is how you get in the water. So, depending on where you're snorkeling, you may either snorkel from the shore or snorkel from the boat. And I've had a lot of people ask me, Matt, which one is better, boat or shore? Well, it just depends. All right, let's talk about boats first. What are the advantages of snorkeling from a boat? Well, first of all, there are a lot of places that you just can't reach from shore when you're trying to snorkel. So, you're going to get more access to snorkeling locations. You're also going to get that fun ride out to wherever you're going, and then they're going to drop you right there. So you're usually going to have less swimming. You're just in the water, right at the reef, right at the wreck, whatever it is you're looking at, you're right there. You don't have to swim out 50, 100 yards to get to it. And if you're in a boat traffic area, even if you're swimming from shore, you're going to have to have a dive flag. Now, if you're going from shore, you're probably going to have to drag it with you with like a floaty thing, and that's kind of a drag in and of itself. But if you're snorkeling from a boat, the boat is, in essence, your dive flag. It has a flag flying, and you are safe from boat traffic. So what are the advantages of snorkeling from the shore? Well, first of all, in my experience, you generally get a lot more time in the water. For me, that is really important. If you go on a dive 
boat or snorkel boat, you're usually going to hit one or two locations and you're probably going to have about 20 minutes to an hour in the water at each site. And then you're done. For me, I need more. I want more water time. So if you're snorkeling from shore, a lot of times you have a lot more leisure to go in and out of the water for the whole day or just depends on what excursion you're on, but typically you get more water time. It's also easier to get into the water from the shore than it is from a boat. When you're on a boat, you usually have to either climb down a ladder, put your fins on and go in, or maybe you could do like a long stride, or if you're on a little boat, back into the water, but it's easier just to walk into the water and go. You can even stand up, unless you're over a coral reef, then you definitely don't want to stand up, but eventually you're going to get to a sandy area, even if there's coral reef there, you're probably going to be able to stand at some point. The other thing is, it's probably going to be less expensive. There are some places where it'll be completely free. If you have your own gear, you just go get in the water and you're good. But other places you may have to pay a fee to get into a park or something like that, but it's typically going to be a lot less expensive than a boat ride. All right, well, that's going to wrap up episode one. I just want to let you know the next few episodes are going to cover specific types of gear, and we'll also talk about whether you should buy them or rent them and how to pick them out, how to size them, how to try them on, all those sorts of things. So look forward to that. After that, we'll get into some basic techniques for snorkeling and eventually we'll get into some advanced techniques for snorkeling. But listen, if you do like this series, please remember to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you're notified whenever a new episode comes out. And also leave some comments below. What do you think? Is this helpful? What are some things you'd like to see me cover that I might not be covering? Or maybe you want more detail or give me your thoughts on snorkeling from the shore, snorkeling from boats and that sort of thing. All right, guys, until the next episode, have a fantastic day.